that atheism exists in the world today can provide support for belief in the Bible. Atheists are left in a large predicament because they don't believe in God. It's generally agreed that if you don't believe in God, then you must at least believe in something. So usually, what an atheist believes in is science. And so science gives them a center on which to provide meaning in an atheist's life. This science that atheists believe in is an ever-growing pool of knowledge. It's being built over the generations by very intelligent men and women. And uh, even in this generation, this pool of knowledge is being added to daily. This becomes the atheist's religion. Why? Because now an atheist will make decisions based on this pool of scientific knowledge. And the decisions that atheists make affects their own lives and also the lives of other people living in the world. So an atheist, when they make a decision, must believe that they're making the correct decision. And so even when an atheist decision proves to be a bad one, certainly at the time they were making that decision, they must have somehow deluded themselves into thinking they were making the right decision, that they knew exactly what to do based on this scientific pool of knowledge. The atheists religion. So the atheists who are making these decisions based on a pool of knowledge that has been built by men and women must therefore believe that they know the difference between right and wrong. They must believe they know the difference between good and evil and that their decisions based on this pool of knowledge which has been built by men and women will benefit themselves and the world they live in. We would hope then that as this scientific pool of knowledge continues to grow, the quality of decisions that atheists make should increase in value and that we should now be living in a world which is benefiting from those decisions. Decisions made by very intelligent men and women or made by atheists who are relying on the scientific pool of knowledge built by very intelligent men and women. So by looking around at what is actually happening in this world, we should be able to measure the value of the atheist's religion. What we see happening around the world should therefore measure the value of what the most intelligent men and women are thinking. And if what we see happening around the world doesn't measure the value of what the most intelligent men and women are thinking, then they're not intelligent enough. So when we look around the world and see what's happening, what do we see? Certainly in the 20th century, we've seen more bloodshed than in any other history recorded. And the 21st century itself looks like it may even eclipse the bloodshed that we saw in the 20th century. So these are the benefits, the results, the accumulated results of all those decisions made 
by people who think they know what to do based on a scientific pool of knowledge which has been growing through the centuries. And certainly people today believe that this pool of knowledge is reaching a pinnacle. So a Christian who looks around at what is happening in the world now understands why they say the Lord's Prayer, the prayer that they were taught to say by Jesus Christ. The first verses of that prayer, a Christian says, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. So what a Christian is actually praying for is that they want to benefit from decisions which are made by God, not decisions made by men who don't believe in God, by atheists. So the fact that atheists exist provides support for belief in the Bible. In fact, right at the very start of the Bible, in Genesis chapter 3, there are some verses which explain uh, the predicament that we're in, where we have to endure those decisions made by people who don't believe in God. We have to endure decisions made by men who think they know what to do. So it's in Genesis chapter 3. You can check it in your own Bible. Uh, I'll read it for you now. It's in uh, chapter 3, verse 4 and 5. And it says there, You will not surely die, the serpent said to the woman. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So, this is the original sin, the very first lies. We do die, and we don't know what to do. So really, what Satan was trying to convince Eve to do was make her own decisions. Satan convinced Eve that she didn't need God, that she would could benefit from her own decisions. She would know the difference between right and wrong, good and evil. So, it really is a predicament. How can God now prove that we can't benefit by making our own decisions? How can God prove that it's really Him that needs to make the decisions that we benefit from. The only way that God could prove that we didn't know what to do, that we didn't know the difference between right and wrong, good and evil, is to let us try. And so here we are now, left in this predicament, where we are benefiting from decisions made by men who think they are like God, knowing right and wrong, good and bad. 